the way in. Welcome back. Thank you very much for being here on time. Uh, I didn't have to take my yellow card out yet. That's fantastic. So uh, thank you for uh, playing along with us. I hope you enjoyed uh, the, the conversations, the discussions you had. I also uh, hope you uh, enjoyed a little coffee. There's a lot of talk about coffee today, and uh, I can promise you we will be talking more about coffee uh, in the following half an hour. Uh, we have Giuseppe Lavazza here. He's, uh, of course, uh, the vice president of the Lavazza Group, uh, a brand you all know in the top five of coffee makers worldwide, and uh, a family company that was founded 1895, uh, and they're in it for the long run, if you want. I had a talk with him, a quick uh, discussion this morning, and he told me, uh, because he's very interested and very active and very engaged in uh, questions of sustainability as well, of the blue economy. And he said, you know, I know and I'm aware of this is not a short uh, race, this is a long-term race, and uh, you need to have uh, a little bit of patience to get there. And I was uh, kind of looking up on, on, on the history of Lovatsa a little bit, and I was uh, made aware that uh, this is indeed a long-term project, because uh, Luigi Lovatsa, I think, uh, the great-grandfather uh, of Mr. Lovatsa, who is here, uh, already said, you know, I don't want to live in a world where nature is destroyed. And that's pretty much still uh, the philosophy of the company today. We're very happy to have him here today to speak about their engagement. Sia il benvenuto, signor Lavazza. Thank you so much. Oh, well, thank you so much for uh, giving me this opportunity to present a little bit our uh, exercise uh, on sustainability, a little bit of a story of our our company it was founded many years ago. I was ready to thank uh, Chris, Elizabeth, and and Gunter. And uh, with Gunter, a very old friends. Uh, getting older together, but uh, still dreaming for something better. So thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to be here. And uh, it's also a great pleasure to understand that the human values are still very relevant for uh, the business community and for uh, the world, of course, because it seems to me that really uh, the human values can make a big difference. It doesn't matter if you're talking about business or uh, politics or uh, science, uh, I think it's uh, central. And uh, between all values, of course, there is also the passion, the love, and the sense of inclusion. It's something so, so important. And for us in, in Lavazza, of course, embracing uh, steps towards uh, sustainability and commitment for uh, uh, corporate social <laughs> responsibility, blue economy, has been an incredible tool uh, to create uh, a strong motivation in the people working for us and attract uh, very talented young people working on the Lavazza project. And people that want to share with us not only maybe a career or a good payroll, but the values, a good mission. This is incredible. You, you can say it's an amazing, amazing glue for, uh, for, uh, for pushing all the company together towards uh, a better future to go towards a better destination. And I think at the end, it's really to try to turn the greed into something different, into the greed, positive greed. And uh, sustainability is not only something that creates a new business model for us, but really create in the people, the Lavazza people, an incredible greed, the force to go on, to try to address big challenges and to work together for a better environment. Just a question of coffee. It's really to design something that you can transfer to the future generation. So I start with my presentation with, sorry, with a very, very brief introduction of uh, the company. Just a few slides. And the company was founded uh, in 1895. It's a family company. It's still a family company focus just on coffee. We are totally dependent on coffee. So we, we care a lot about coffee because coffee is our life. Without coffee, without the biodiversity of the coffee, we, without good farmers, Lavazza can't exist anymore. So we are in the same boat. And Lavazza is a pure premium coffee company, pure and premium. So we wanted to sell and to buy high quality coffee. But uh, recently, it's just not Lavazza is a multi-brand group, encompasses some of the best brands 
in uh, Europe and in the rest of the world, not only in uh, the family, in, in the consumer uh, channel, but even in, in the profession, the professional market. So we have acquired many, many companies, but with the idea of buying local champions, very high quality company, company that share the same values in business and positioning in, in, in sustainability as, as Lavazza. Lavazza operates in more than 90 countries and directly, of course, in our main geography with the subsidiaries, but we are also a huge network of, uh, of distributors in uh, all the other markets. Uh, uh, the number of our employees is uh, uh, 4,000, and uh, we can express uh, our business in a very different way, for example, in cups. So very happy to serve every year around 30 billion of cups, uh, espresso cups. Or for, uh, we trade 4 million of uh, uh, green coffee bags every year. Uh, the revenues, of course, is 1.87 billion euros. Uh, but what is interesting is the rise in turnover compared to 2017s. 9.3% plus 9.3% is still a quite thriving business for us. But very proud of to show the out of Italy rate, the 64% demonstrate the willing of the company to become more and more international. And our goal in t by 2021 is to reach 70% of our turnover outside Italy. We trust a lot in our country, so we have to have at least 70% of our uh, <laughs> turnover outside Italy to be, to be safe. And uh, of course, Lavazza is, is a brand, and this is uh, what uh, the consumer are thinking about uh, who we are. Uh, and the brand profile, of course, uh, reveal a company deeply rooted in high quality, in uh, authenticity, a global brand, but creativity is very important in our job. We are Italian, we like to express a lot of creativity through our food tradition, and coffee is part of that. Accessibility. We want to be very close to the consumer. We want to give you a high quality coffee, but a, a very fair price, accessible to everyone. We like to think about every kind of preparation when we think about our coffee. So we are not just stuck on the espresso, but on all different kinds of preparation, international consumer love. Italian, is, of course, is important for us, but also sustainability is part of, of our genetic DA, DNA. Great, so uh, our way towards sustainability business model and practical application of the circular economy has been really speed up over the last uh, 15 years because uh, a stronger, deeper interconnection among the principal stakeholders create an incredible environment uh, to move from a one kind of business model to another one, much more in line with the needs and the challenge of the time being, of the new generation. And we are absolutely aware that our choice can contribute to invert the direction that our planet, planet has taken. And a call to action, but of course uh, uh, effective action, is uh, it's really uh, the key words uh, we have to keep in our, uh, our mind. And taking an active role, of course, uh, is not just a way of defending a way, uh, an old way, an obsolete way of doing business. From my point of view, this is the new business. This is the new business model with a lot of opportunities and with a lot of uh, uh, innovation that we can introduce into the market for, 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 the, common, for the common good, for trying to go towards a greener and more hospital, and can say also inclusive planet. Okay, uh, 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 corporate social responsibility, I think, was uh, part of the original mission of uh, our company, a value embedded in the, the family culture. Lavaz is a family company. And uh, uh, thinking ethically is, uh, it, it have always been part of our DNA, because thinking, looking after the family, and looking after the family business for us was the same thing. So using the same set of values, so integrity, reputation, accountability, the long-term vision, uh, the willing of handing over to the next generation something that is, is bigger than us, is a big asset. So it's not just uh, an asset that belongs to the family, belongs to, to the community. 
and, and that has to be protected and handing over with, with, with a better value. And uh, I think that the statement about my father is about doing business with our heart that really explained it uh, was very easy for us to, to, to shift from simple ethic to sustainability and all these advances application that circular economy is. It was a lesson that he just learned from uh, 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 his predecessor that from the beginning started uh, to uh, apply in, in a very simple and, 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 and in small scale some principle of sustainability, mainly towards uh, three big areas that are the producing country and the small coffee growers that were very, very tiny. Employees and stakeholders was very relevant. And the country, the city, of course, uh, the, terror the territories where they uh, operated. But uh, uh, at the end of uh, the 90s, uh, uh, the complexity of the set of the problem the company has to take on in the first year of the new millennium really redefine uh, the core of uh, the corporate social responsibility concept for Lavazza. Putting under the spotlight the urgent and relevant issues which affected the entire coffee community of the coffee belt around the world. So for the first time we move from uh, we move from uh, something internal to something external. And, and the foundation so was created in uh, 2004 to, uh, uh, to show the commitment of the Lavazza family towards the sustainability and to run sustainable projects for the benefit and the strengthening of the local coffee community. And the main goals of the Lavazza Foundation were, of course, increase the productivity and the quality of the coffee plantation, promoting entrepreneurship and independence of the coffee growers, improving the living and quality condition of the coffee growing community, mitigating and countering the effect of the climate change. Another step very important is the introduction of the Global Compact 2030. A new agenda with the new goals are put on the table of state, government and companies. And of course the seriousness of the global scenario and the urgency on the action and the fact that all the coffee industry was uh, threatened directly by the global events like uh, climate change, immigration, deforestation, loss of biodiversity, speculation in price, volatility, consolidation of production and massification really pushed the Lavazza Foundation, the Lavazza Group, to underwrite the agenda, totally underwrite the agenda of the global company. And from that point, all the main components of the project run by the Lavazza Foundation has been designed, taking into consideration the impact and the compliance uh, with the SDG. And, but how the adoption of this model based on sustainable development can impact the coffee supply chain? And when you decide to embrace a sustainable development method and to use them down the coffee supply chain, you generate a tremendous impact towards the production of quality coffee. Quality coffee means better value for the producer and better value for the consumer. For this reason, quality coffee is actually an opportunity for a sustainable development. I'm going to show you very briefly the implication of this action uh, towards, for example, the SDGs. Uh, when uh, we uh, work to get more high-quality coffee from uh, the farmer using sustainable project, we normally use these levers. Uh, good agricultural practices, and so we back the SDG number 12, we use climate change adaption, adaption and we back uh, the SDG number 13. Family engagement and women empowerment, a very important component of all our projects, and we back the SDG number 15. Last but not least, youth entrepreneurship, and we back the SDG number way, 8. These are also the four main Lavazza priority goals. But the Lavazza also decided to set up another goal, the goal number zero. The goal number zero is made by two parts. The first part is to try to communicate and explain to a broader audience the meaning of the SDGs. And second is to drag different clusters of uh, uh, stakeholders to take on an active role for the achievement of the goals when uh, they get in touch with Lavazza. We encourage the adoption of certain activities uh, to accelerate uh, and speed up the addition of practices that can help to achieve uh, 
<coughs> the SDG goals. So towards, for example, our employees, we ask them every two weeks, what are they doing in their daily routine to achieve the goals? We give them some advice, of course, very simple, but it's a very useful interaction with it, our population. With the local communities, what do they give us to support a better awareness of the goals? The youth, for example, how we can educate and provide right information to the young audience, to the public institution, you see there. What is our role in public discussion and public agendas? Towards the supplier, what they need to be compliant and eligible to be Lavata supplier. So we have, for example, a very specific con uh, code of conduct for, for them. And just show you uh, some uh, example of uh, the application of this goal number zero. For example, we have this initiative with the city of Turin called Two Towards 2030. And we use street art as a means of dissemination of the 70 SDGs. So we have 17 street artists, 17 buildings in the cities, 70 walls, and 70 SDG explain in this way a one city Turin. But we have also, for example, the Lavazza calendar, 2019 is one of the series. We have done many other calendars oriented to the SDG. This is by Emi Vitale, a very famous international photographer. This is announcing the urgency of action by using the force of the language of photography and portraying both natural beauties and the contribution of the landscape part to, the, to spread the message of the SDGs. Then we have more corporate tools, as for example, the Lavazza Sustainability Report. The, uh, the, the report is used to announce the holistic approach of the company towards the sustainability, to say sustainability issues, to use, of course, uh, international standards to express them, to be comparable with others, and of course, uh, the highlights are the carbon footprint action uh, or the action towards uh, reduce, uh, reuse, and recycle material and products, but even training and education towards different audience and corporate events. And last but not least, the rewarding and metrics. It's very important for us not to be self assessed, but to have uh, external auditors that can check out the performance uh, we are we are getting to, so how we are really performing towards, uh, of course, uh, the peers, uh, sort of benchmarking. And so we are very, very happy to see that uh, uh, following, for example, the 2018 Global Corporate Responsibility Rec-Rec, Lavazza rank number 32, on a big sample of 7,000 companies around the world. We are not big companies, but that's very nice. And uh, uh, on the top, even certification. So we uh, got uh, uh, the certification to be part of this level global compact uh, at the category advanced. But just to be sure that doing things is not you know, just, just, just uh, you know, talking or, or telling stories. There are something more sound that we can look at to say, oh, we are doing a good job, we can do better, we are improving, we are going down. But along, uh, by chance, I can say, we are not alone. Along our path towards a more uh, responsible business model, we are not alone. Many players, and this is the beauty of the coffee industry, we have a big family of people, that's competitors, of course, but very, a lot of common values, really, uh, are among us to create a family of friends and not simply uh, competitors trying to um, having market share, a profit. Uh, and the action is uh, it's, uh, it's absolutely across the board. So many players coming from different areas have joined forces and set up a multiple kind of pre-competitive initiative. This is just one of these, ICP, International Coffee Partner, was established in 2001 by eight committed coffee company, traders and roasters, and uh, the achievements are amazing. 83,000 farmer family household involved in a, a sustainable project with an additional target of 50,000 by 2023. 
Of course, the focus this, of this initiative is to improve the productivity and the degree of the entrepreneurship among uh, the small the farmers and the small coffee community around the world. I want to mention Coffee Climate. Coffee Climate is an open global partnership of uh, coffee company and public partner. Focus, of course, uh, on <coughs> the topic of the climate change. We try to better respond to the climate change by increasing the resilience of the coffee community through our innovative uh, farming technique. So there is a study, there are applications, plot, uh, uh, farmer feed school that try to spread the message, the message and uh, the sensitivity towards the climate, the climate change. Because not only the coffee community is aware about this risk, it's not so crystal clear. So you have really to talk about it. And also try to create the tools. So we have created this very interesting coffee and climate toolbox that is a, a sort of uh, an online instrument open to everybody where we put inside different uh, kind of intervention that the farmers can use to protect themselves uh, from the climate change. And many of them are inspired by the blue economy. Very natural intervention. For example, to keep uh, the soil wet, uh, to work the water, uh, to try to uh, create uh, uh, coffee shade ground. A lot of things are really in line with some big principle of the blue economy. But also something Focus on research. For example, the work, the work of research is a non-profit organization committed to research on protecting and preserving coffee with a specific focus on the growing phase, when the coffee, coffee tree is very small, little. And um, they run a lot of projects in many countries. Uh, and for example, another initiative with Ili, uh, the Italian roaster, we release the fully open access genome sequence for Arabica coffee to the World Coffee Resort. We, 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 we found is a research about uh, the coffee sequence genome of the Arabica, and we decided together to give, to release them to the WCR for the benefit of all the coffee community. We don't know how it will be used, but it's an incredible amount of, of, of data and information, so it, it was impossible to think to, to keep it only for us. So I think that the WCR is the best environment to try to get the, be the best out of this uh, very important uh, um, uh, discovery. And uh, this is very interesting, the technology transformation model. Uh, this is an action made with a lot of partners. In Colombia, Lavazza, Microsoft, Car Cafe is a trader with its foundation, NGO, Macaya, and our consultant, Alo, with the support of the Colombian government and the President Santos, we launched an innovative project with the aim of bringing internet connectivity to remote rural areas strongly affected by the violence and the guerrilla. And deliver with this a, a, a range of innovative service to the local communities, such as providing uh, real, in real time uh, market information data for the farmer, to have access to online education for uh, the local school, a telemedicine service for the medical center, course or digital training and education, cloud service, a smartphone dashboard to collect and download priceless data directly pulled out of from the field and carefully <coughs> and systematically uploaded with the help of uh, advanced but efficient weather and ground sensor and elaborated with the artificial intelligence algorithm. This is a, a wonderful application of new technology, not just blockchain. You can really use and adopt a lot of that. And the idea of, of generating energy with the, with the kites, it could be great. Uh, it could really add an incredible new component to this project because energy is, is, is fundamental to run this kind of stuff. And, uh, was already mentioned in 2008, uh, we opened a little door and put just a little seed, how we can use, for example, the coffee grounds. And uh, uh, Gunther always told me that oh, it's, it's a nonsense. You use just a, a very small percentage of the coffee to brew the coffee. Let's, 
less than 2% and 98% of, of the coffee, that the, it's the biomass that you just throw away. So it's important to think how we can try to use, use this in a better way. And of course, this understanding has given rise to a circular solution, <coughs> including a lot of possible applications from the farming uh, of the mushroom uh, to the chicken feed, because we can use, for example, the rest of, of the coffee grounds uh, used for uh, uh, producing and farming the mushroom uh, to feed the uh, chicken uh, with the very natural products. A semi-finished product, for example, for uh, textile and shows industries, or inks, or a semi-finished product for cosmetic, or pellets. And uh, not only in 2008, but even in uh, 2015, in the occasion of Exmo Milan, Lavazza, along with the Novamont, the Slow Food and Polytechnic of, of Turin, we have created and presented a very beautiful project called The Flavor of Coffee Grounds. A specific project focused on circular economy, practical application, with really the focus of enhancing the use of the coffee ground. We rep represent a valuable and flexible input for a developing new process, new projects, materials, and food. A great attention was also paid uh, to the problem and the challenge represented by the plastic capsules. Of course, very relevant now no, with the problem of the ocean. But uh, at that time already, so important and to try to find a solution and to use, uh, to manufacture this capsule, something compostable coming from bioplastic coming from renewable sources. And it was made and presented exactly during this, this event, like a, 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 a tangible application of technology and blue economy, of course. And the goal was to raise awareness regarding the use of material like coffee grounds that proves to be a resource, a very, very valuable uh, input, and not just uh, an output uh, that we throw away. And all this international cooperation and collaboration towards a more sustainable and responsible business supply chain is, of course, in line with another very important uh, United, uh, United Nations SDG, is the SDG number 17. Of course, the adoption of all this initiative has generated an incredible impact uh, in the backbone of the Lavazza industrial business model, turning upside down all the targets and the KPI of our plants. This is very valuable for our economy because we have successfully improved our productivity. We have reduced cost and the usage of material. We have disseminating a lot of uh, sensitiveness towards uh, the importance to be sustainable across the board. And uh, the adopted approach, you see there, uh, really generated a remarkable impact totally in line with the SDG number 12. So the reduction of the material with the eco-design, reduction of scrapes and waste, reduction of not renewable portion, but the bio-based and recycled content, the reuse, considering so reusable solution. We want to arrive to have 100% of our, all our packaging recyclable by 20. 25, and this is absolutely feasible. Yeah. Last but not least, recyclable or compostable. We have launched recently in three big uh, markets a uh, <coughs> totally compostable capsule that can uh, be composted uh, following, uh, of course, uh, the European regulation in 180 days, disappear completely. So, giving not only a very high standard as a espresso, as a, a product, convenience, of course, accessibility, but the idea that we start from the soil and we go to the soil with an output that would make compost and usable for uh, agricultural activities. And uh, the Lavazza path towards uh, an integrated and sustainable business model has spontaneously spons began many years ago with the first generation at the helm of the company, as a sort of a pre-established value of, for the way of doing business. But generation after generation, it has become more and more autonomous, 
and permeated without losing its original strong ethical root. But nowadays, it's so expanded and branched out to represent the entire framework of the company and its vision and plan to create value through the whole, sustainable, the whole supply chain. But in Lavazza <coughs> case study, circular economy has also been adopted as the guideline of one of our most important investment undertaken by the company over the last year. This is a, a real estate investment, the construction of our new headquarter in Turin. And uh, this is our contribution to the achievement of the goal number 11, sustainable city and communities. You can throw away the coffee, but you can also throw away not use part of your city if uh, you are talking about abandoned neighbor. And uh, starting from a brownfield in this case, Nuvola is an example of uh, integrated urban space reju rejuvenation led by a private stakeholder and inspired by the highest standard of uh, environmental sustainability in building manufacturing. This building has got the level platinum certification that is the highest standard in terms of sustainability for uh, real estate. And in my country, there are only three buildings. This is one of these with this kind of certification. But this is not only uh, the only target that we put on the table when we decide uh, to invest such amount of money. Because beside the construction of the new headquarters, all the pre-existent and abandoned building, all protected by the historical building authority of the city, has been renovated and transformed into new spaces and given back to the city with the purpose of sharing with the inhabitants and the visitor the new areas, the garden, the new project, the food experience. We have two restaurants here open to the city. Culture, art, event, innovation, and business. This is our small story. Thank you for uh, your attention. And of course, my invitation is to come to Turin and to be guest of our Nouvelle. Thanks. Thank you very much. Giuseppe Lavazza, thank you. Please stay with me for just one minute. Uh, by the way, Nuvolo, I heard you eat very, very well there. I'm, I'm sure you can, uh, you can attest that. Uh, maybe we have time for one or two questions out from the audience. If you had, yes, we have one on the left-hand side. Sorry, the microphone has to go all the way over there. Unless it's a strong voice, then we might hear you as well. well maybe it's strong enough. Yes, yes, we can hear you. Come on. Thank you very much very impressive uh, uh, presentation and seeing how difficult it is to transform a major company and so I feel a little ashamed to ask you this question but I dare do it and what about organic produce and not using pesticides and fertilizers? Yeah, thank you for the question. We bought a specific company in Canada, for example, Kikinors, specialized in organic and sustainable coffee. And as Lavazza, for example, we are very uh, supportive towards uh, the organic uh, that represents uh, a big trend in the consumer, but even a big opportunity for the production. So not only in Canada, we have a, co a company 100% focused on this with products sold in Canada and in, all, and in the United States for the North America. But even in Europe, we have recently launched uh, a full range of organic products to try to, of course, offer our idea of organic uh, to uh, coffee lovers and coffee consumers. The problem of organic in coffee is that the quantity of, of coffee, organic coffee available, is very, very small. So there is a big, big problem of uh, uh, procurement. And gradually, the, uh, the, the producers are, are, are trying to support this. But it's a long way. Uh, and the big, big issue nowadays is really to get this coffee. In the past time, there was a big request of certificate coffee, but now it's a little bit over, and uh, all the, the focus is shifting towards organic coffee. So organic, it's in America, is an incredible trend, very strong, because all the food is affected. affected. It's very supported by the idea of being more, of course, uh, organic, safe, and genuine. In Europe, it's different, because the attitude uh, is not the same. But 
Even in coffee, we are seeing a lot of attention, especially by the millennials, the junior generation. So we are very supportive towards this kind of, uh, of product. Yes, one more here, a short one, please, so we can, yes. Are there any ideas of cooperating with the other big companies like uh, Jak Jakobs and uh, other coffee producers to really promote organic on a worldwide scale? Because only if you work together, then you can really accelerate the production of organic coffee. Uh, the copycat in the coffee industry is very fast. So when one starts, all the others are following because, uh, of course, they are scared to lose market share. So the first is to be the first mover and to go. When the others see, oh, oh, oh the business is going, uh, go. And everyone go in the same direction. So like ships, you know. Uh, we are very limited people, so coffee. <laughs> and, but anyway, yeah, there are a lot of talks uh, amongst companies. So n another very key point uh, is that compared to the past, we were in silos. Nowadays, we are a really open platform, and we talk a lot, and also. Uh, so there is movement uh, going on there uh, as well. Thank you very much, Mr. Lowell. I was quite surprised uh, that you do a calendar as well. We know about Italian companies doing calendars. Pirelli springs to mind, but it's nice that someone takes uh, an educational form. Since 1993. Uh, exactly, and, and talk about the SDGs. Thank you so much Thanks, once sir. again. Thanks. Thank you very much.